This is the Weather Extreme video. This is for Wednesday morning, the 25th of January. James Spann here getting set for another rain event that's knocking on the door. Let's uh, get in there and take a look at some of the Skycam shots around the Alpha Skycam network early this morning at the somewhat insane hour of 5 a.m. That's a look at the Walker County Courthouse in downtown Jasper. It's mostly cloudy and clearly not as cold this morning as yesterday with the clouds and south breeze. Look at downtown Clanton in Chilton County. Just got word last night that the Maplesville tornado was rated EF2 by the Weather Service. And from Fayette, there's the uh, courthouse there up in northwest Alabama. Deep upper low near El Paso, Texas this morning in the southern branch of the jet stream. Producing this big rain mass. Tornado watch for parts of central and south Texas. Flash flood watches around Austin and San Antonio. But let me tell you what now, this is not all bad. Understand the uh, Lone Star State is in the midst, as you know, of a horrible, horrible drought and by golly, that's some beneficial rain right there. So it's, uh, I would say the benefits uh, outweigh the negatives here in this case. Temperatures this morning, uh, a little above average for much of the nation. The uh, really cold stuff we saw last week up north is kind of moderated to some degree. And down south, it's pretty mild ahead of that upper low. There's our watch warning map. Uh, there's a tornado watch for South Texas. Flash flood watches from uh, Dallas-Fort Worth up to... Uh, Fayetteville, Fort Smith, Arkansas, and we note the Weather Service in Huntsville has posted a flash flood watch for their county warning area, and that's the Tennessee Valley plus Coleman County. And again, let me stress, Coleman County is in the Birmingham television market, but it's in the Huntsville county warning area. It's a little confusing, but uh, Coleman belongs to us on the television side. We'll check the uh, convective outlook. This is for today and tonight, slight risk of severe weather. Southeastern Texas and much of Louisiana. And no real change tomorrow for a Thursday. The better severe weather opportunities over the southern half of Alabama. And again, we'll walk you through that in uh, detail. There was no enhancement in there. The, and within the slight risk, uh, the probabilities are at 15%. And up this way, the low-end 5% probabilities. And it just doesn't look like a classic severe weather setup here, as you'll see. And the rain for the next five days, this is valid through... Uh, Sunday evening through the weekend, and this is suggesting rain amounts varying from about an inch and a half up in the Tennessee Valley down to uh, about one inch in the Gulf Coast with bigger numbers north and west. And this is the RPM accumulated rain through 72 hours, which is, of course, higher resolution. And you can see it's got some heavier rain down on the Gulf Coast with uh, uh, thunderstorms. And for the Tennessee Valley, it does uh, suggest rain amounts could get up there toward two inches especially over northwest Alabama, and down this way, amounts are, are one-half to one inch, which I think is low. I, I think a pretty good chunk of our area could get one to two inches, and, of course, the big numbers are off to the west. All right, this is the GFS. This is valid at uh, noon today. This is the 06E run, valid at uh, 12 o'clock at 500 millibars. Big upper low over the Rio Grande. And during the day today, the big rains, of course, will be west of here. Having said that, in the warm air advection pattern, we could see a few scattered showers breaking out through tonight, but nothing organized. Tomorrow, that thing is slow moving. According to the GFS, at noon, it should be around uh, College Station, Texas still. But let's walk you through the RPM, the high-resolution RPM. This will get you through this event. This is this evening at 6 o'clock. shows nothing here. Thunderstorms over Arkansas and Louisiana. Tomorrow morning at 6 o'clock, uh, we could see some rain falling here at that point. Nothing overly heavy. Go to 12 noon tomorrow. Look at the line of storms down there in the Gulf. I think that's where the real severe, the severe weather will be. And that could be a pretty big water spout outbreak, if you will, over the open waters. And again, we've got showers here. 6 o'clock tomorrow evening, that really nasty line of storms. And again, that should be severe storms, should be racing on the Gulf Coast. And in the coastal waters up here, definitely some thunder, some heavy rain possible at times. But... Not totally convinced we have any severe weather problems. Then by Friday morning at 6 o'clock, the RP RPM has everything totally out of here. And maybe a few snow flurries up in the Great Smokies. Uh, the RPM is faster than the GFS, uh, but I think it might be on, on the right track here. We'll probably leave a, a chance of lingering rain in there Friday morning, but um, I think most of it will be over by 6 o'clock. We'll check the uh, severe weather parameters. The, we'll just look at the STP this morning, the significant tornado parameter, STP. Kind of a combination of shear and instability. This is at uh, 
6 o'clock tomorrow evening, and the STP does get over one uh, over parts of southwest Alabama. And yeah, we'll have to, you know, we'll watch up, up this way for sure. There's no doubt we have to watch it. We'll go to 9 o'clock tomorrow night. You can see how the higher STP values. And again, it's about a one over South Alabama. And interestingly enough, I'll be scheduled to speak down there tomorrow night at the Greenville uh, Chamber of Commerce banquet. Always bring bad weather with me. And then at uh, midnight tomorrow night, higher STP values move over to Southeast Alabama and the Georgia border. So uh, if there's any severe weather for those of you down in South Alabama, the best chance would be uh, tomorrow night. All right, uh, this is Friday. Back to the GFS. It's, it's pretty slow with this thing. It's got the upper low and the Vortmax around Mobile, the surface low east of here, and maybe some lingering rain. But again, I, I think the rain will be ending pretty early Friday, and there could be some uh, gradual clearing. Uh, maybe Friday afternoon, and we start to turn uh, cooler with highs dropping back in the low 60s. And then Saturday, this run not as cool on Saturday. It would suggest a high of maybe 60, but a beautiful day. The sky sunny, Sunday colder. Big old 1032 high dropping in here. Lows drop in the low 50s. So uh, if this is right, Sunday could be about 10 degrees cooler than Saturday. And uh, Sunday morning, we could start the day around the freezing mark. And there's Monday. Monday morning, I think we will be below freezing. Upper 20s and low 30s, but a sunny day with uh, a high in the upper 50s. Very seasonal. Tuesday of next week, a front approaches. And Wednesday of next week, kind of a, a dead duck dying front comes in here. Maybe a few showers, but over, overly not, imp or not overly impressive there. And the end of the forecast on the 9th of February. We got troughing over the east, but uh, cold front coming in here. But uh, this operational run not reflecting any of those cold shots like we've seen in other runs. But again, we all know out here this is purely voodoo. That's it for the Weather Extreme video today. We'll have notes on the blog. The next video here by 3.30 or so today. And if you live around here, we invite you to watch us on television this evening. ABC 3340 in Birmingham at 4, 5, 6, and 10. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day and God bless. The first thing you've got to understand, you cannot rely on an outdoor siren. You cannot hear those inside a home, a building, a church. It won't work. You've got to get something inside your house. That's a weather radio or maybe a smartphone app. We work with a company that's developed a wonderful weather radio app for Android phones and iPhones. It knows where you are, and if you're in a tornado warning polygon, you get the warning. And if you're not, you don't. It's an effective device, and it's a great way to be sure you get the warning.